I'd like to call the 10th meeting of the 2015-2016 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for today? Thank you, Mayor. You become like the five people you spend the most time with. Choose carefully. Thank you for that advice. Uh, next, we'll go under the roll call. Will the clerk please call the roll? I'm sorry. Um, 13 present. Um, Alderman Don Hammond, Mike Damro, and Susie Lassard are all excused. The next, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll go on to approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Thank you. Move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next is uh, resignations. City Attorney. Thank you. There is one uh, from Heather Cleveland uh, from the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force. It says, Dear Mayor Vandersteen, the purpose of this letter is to inform you of my resignation as a member of the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force, effective immediately. She gives some other information. Sincerely, Heather Cleveland. <coughs> Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to Mayor's appointments. City Attorney. I'll start with uh, this one uh, from the Mayor. Uh, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Uh, Roman Drawn to be considered for appointment to the Law and Licensing Committee to fill the unexpired term of David Van Akron, whose term expires 4 18 16. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to suspend. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you. I move to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify. Well, I'm sorry, we have to call the roll on this one. Yes. No? Yes. Okay. Mark. Thank you. Twelve eyes, one abstention. Motion passes. The next item is the confirmation of mayor's appointments, city attorney. Thank you. Uh, this one says, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Scott Grinke to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired position of Tom Brickley, whose term expires on 12-31-15, signed by the mayor. And uh, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Jake Toman to be considered for appointment to fill the newly created position as a business <coughs> owner on the Business Improvement District. His term will expire on 12 31 16, again signed by the mayor. Uh, then uh, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration Michael Langan to be considered for appointment to the Building Use Committee to fill the unexpired position of Shauna Nishik, whose term expires on 4 25 16. Thank you. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, those uh, confirmations are before you. Uh, all those in favor, please signify. Oh, I may have to call roll again. Right. <clears throat> Twelve eyes and one abstention. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the public forum. City Clerk. Uh, yes, this evening we have one on public forum, Henry Castillo. <coughs> Henry, if you want to come up. And Henry, can you give us your home address, please? Yes, that's uh, 1619 North 38th Street. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. Uh, the reason I'm here today is um, 
we are looking to try to expand our service area for the Gateway Neighborhood Association. Right now, our boundaries are from Superior Avenue to Ontario, from 9th Street to 14th Street. Um, some of the some of the um, areas that we we'd like to include to expand the service area is we'd like to include Holy Name Church and United or Fountain Park Church also, which is the United Methodist Church that's on um, Ninth and Erie. And we'd like to keep it so we don't have it zigzagging. We'd like to just go from Superior all the way down to Ontario right before 8th Street. So, and we've talked to some of the businesses that we, we're looking to establish a business association for the Gateway Neighborhood Association. And part of those businesses that we're looking to include are the um, GT Graphics and the, the new, new ice cream place that's right where the old Zier Heidi's was. I think it's three, three Twins Ice Cream, I think it is. And um, the reason we'd like to do that is because one of the individuals would like to come on our board, and if they're not in a service area, they would be ineligible to sit on the Gateway Board. Uh, so, um, and in fact, uh, when I went and talked to um, Fa uh, Pastor Waddell from the Methodist Church, um, he basically thought he was in the Gateway area. In fact, uh, the letter that I have, I have two letters, one from Holy Name and one from uh, Fountain Park, just to let you know that they, their intent, that they do want to be included. It says, Dear Members of the Leadership Council, I talked with Henry Capitello today with the desire to expand the Gateway neighborhood eastward into the 800 block of Superior Avenue to Ontario Avenue. It was my understanding that this section 800 from Ontario was already in the Gateway neighborhood, but as Henry explained, this section is really not in the Gateway neighborhood at this time. Since we are directly across the street from the current boundaries of the Gateway neighborhood, it makes sense to me that we be incorporated into the Gateway neighborhood. The inclusion of both Holy Name Catholic Church and Fa Fountain Park United Methodist Church into the Gateway neighborhood could positively impact the community and give le leadership to the neighborhood activities and programs that could provide stability, encouragement, and support to those within the neighborhood. Fountain Park United Methodist Church fully supports the efforts of the Gateway Neighborhood Association Board in expanding the neighborhood's borders towards 8th Street and as stated in the proposal. Uh, from Holy Name, Holy Name of Jesus Catholic Church located at 818 Huron Avenue would like to petition to join the Gateway Neighborhood Association. In conversations with the president of the association, Henry Capitello, it became apparent that a more in, in, intentional relationship between Holy Name of Jesus and the Gateway community would help strengthen the neighborhood. Thank you for this consideration of this request. And we do have the businesses, but I, I haven't had time. I've been swamped. As you know, we had our, our Gateway Black Party, and that was an overwhelming success. We had over 300 people that came to the Gateway Black Party and half of those individuals were young people. Um, we basically were in charge of the nachos and the popcorn. We served 600 nachos and <coughs> eight bags of popcorn, and the popcorn guys were about this wide and about that big. So, um, And I would, I would imagine we, we had, at the time that we served the, the brats and the hot dogs, there must have been about four to 500 brats that were served in and at least 200 hot dogs. So we had a lot of people there. So, And the reason we're looking to expand our service area is because we'd like to include the two churches that we have in our area because right now we don't have any church that's in the gateway area. And not so much that it's a specific for the church, but what happens is we find that when you do have some of the churches involved, it adds a lot more stability to the area, and they have a lot of membership, so we can really count on their participation. In fact, uh, we'd like to create a special committee for the Gateway neighborhood where we would have the church represented there, and they would be responsible for the family and youth in our area, and 
with their participation, I think we can really expand the services that we have to the young people and the families within the Gateway area. So, Excuse me, Henry, would you like your extra minute? Yes. So what, what would happen is, in order for us to get the expansion, I know you approved the resolution that designated our boundaries when we were officially recognized by the city of Sheboygan. So I would think that you would also have to approve this expansion. So a resolution would have to come to the council to expand our service area. And I would just like to uh, ask you that if you, if you can to kind of expedite matters because we'd like to get some of the, uh, the church representation on our board and they have said they'd like to serve. And as soon as you approve that, we can get them officially on our board. So I thank you, and we appreciate all your, you've done for us already. Thank you very much, Henry. Henry. We'll get that on our next agenda. Okay, thank you. Okay, then we'll move on to mayor's announcements. And um, I'm gonna deviate a little bit from the norm here and invite uh, Bill Hoppy from Gallagher Asphalt to come up and give us a little bit of uh, information about our new hot in place asphalt recycling project that's uh, going on. They've completed A Street and uh, North Avenue so far in that process. Bill, the floor is yours. Mayor, thank you very much for this opportunity to speak to you and the Common Council about this process. Um, I'm Bill Hoppy. I'm a retired Navy officer, uh, Civil Engineer Corps, doing public works and contracting for 20 years, and then 16 years as a city engineer in Mequon. Uh, as the mayor pointed out, we're up here doing a hot in place asphalt recycling contract uh, for the city of Morgan. I can use whatever mic you like. So. Um, basically, the definition of our surface uh, method for recycling is uh, we heat it up, we, we mill it, we, uh, we don't mill it, we scarify it, put fresh oil in it, mix it back up, and lay it back down again. Because what goes wrong with your asphalt roads is the sun and the weather and that beat the oil out of it, and the oil acts as the glue which holds all the rock together. The rock is still good, the sand is still good, let's reuse it, so we're putting new oil back into it. Next slide. It's not a new process. It's been around since 1908 in Toronto, and what is that, 1936? 1930 in Chicago, the first pictures I could find. So it has a little history. Next. This is a picture of our train uh, that Gallagher has for our surface recycling technique. It runs about 105 feet, 110 feet from nose to tail. From flag person to flag person, to include the roller, it's about 325, 350 feet overall as a moving, working area. And it moves down the road at about yeah, 15, 16 feet a minute on a good hot day. <coughs> on cold mornings, more like 12 or 13. But it's a moving work zone. Next, please. Uh, the first heater, uh, the step in this process is we, we, I like to call slowly roast the road. Uh, so the first heater brings that road temperature up to about 200 degrees. Uh, so when that first heater, le uh, right behind it, it's about 200 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Next, please. The second heater now brings that road surface up to about 325 degrees. And that heat penetrates down into that mat. So it's not just limited just to that top inch and a half, two inches. It penetrates about six inches down into the mat. Next, please. Now here's the guts of the operation. It's fairly simplistic. We put new hot oil on. I don't know if you can see the, the spinning wheels there, distributors. Then right behind that, we have the hydraulically set spring-loaded tines. And when I say this, we can push down these, these, high, these tines, and since they're on springs, if they hit a manhole or a valve box, they ride up, ride back over, ride back, back down again. And we scrape the asphalt off and continue on our way. Next, please. All right, here's, here's the guts, you know, better picture of the guts of the operation. I got ahead of myself a little bit. Uh, the spinning tines, the scarif or spinning wheels with the new oil, scarifying tines, and it's basically a standard paving screed in the back, heated paving screed. There's a constantly moving auger, so the tines do the first mixing of the new oil and the old asphalt road. The augers do a second mixing. It comes out underneath that paving screed. Next slide. And there's the augers mixing it up. Next slide. And it comes out the back of the paving screed 
as a new rejuvenated road surface. Next, hit it with a roller. Next, and it's open to traffic. All right, sweet little process. Next, so where am I? Surface recycling. Okay, all right. I, I, I just did this presentation today, so I'm, I'm not quite. The only, one of the few downsides to our technique is since we're working with the asphalt that's there and we're mixing up patch material and, and crack fill material and that, we're leaving a very high grade leveling course behind us. Now on the roads you have here, since uh, Ryan and, and Dave have been patching with a 3 8 inch minus mix for a number of years, you have a very tight road coming out the back end of our process. But a lot of communities don't, a lot of counties don't. So you have to do some surface treatment to close those pores up so the water doesn't get down into that mat, freeze slaw, start popping out and cracking. So you can either do a chip seal, a slurry seal, uh, or what, like we're doing here, we're using a MIGS uh, onyx treatment, which is a very fine, <coughs> fine aggregate in, in a spray application, just to button it up. If you wanted to build structure to your road, then you put a hot mix overlay down on top of it, an inch and a half or two inches, and you're building strength to your road. But since the roads that we're doing this year here in Sheboygan, are already on a concrete mat, and we got two inches of asphalt on top, you're not really looking for structure. You're looking just to rejuvenate that surface, and what we're doing is going to work. Next, please. So where does it fit in? Well, is it a pavement uh, preservation, or is it new construction? Well, it's pavement preservation. Next, please. And the Federal Highway Administration recognizes it as a pavement preservation technique. Next, please. <coughs> Best place to get it? And the power curve for your road uh, degradation is up there where the, in, on a scale of, of 1 to 10. Uh, Ryan, we <coughs> use what? Do you use Pazer here? <coughs> or Micro Pazer? So you want the roads at 4.5 to 6.5 in that range where it's, there's still some really good life to it. Next slide. Where do we normally get them? Threes and fours. Does it still work? Absolutely. As long as there's no structural issues with that road, in other words, base issues. Uh, our process would work. Just like a mill and fill or an overlay, if you do have base issues, you need to fix those first. Next. Here are some uh, examples of and timelines for various pavement preservation techniques, all the way from chip seal, where you do it at year zero to two, and about every three to five years after that, and, and it's about how long it lasts, all the way down to a hot mix uh, overlay, or excuse me, to a uh, hot in place at about, what do we have here? year six to 10 range, depending upon how your road weathers. And it lasts about five to seven <coughs> with a chip seal or slurry seal, which is generally, then you chip it again. It's not saying that the hot in place <coughs> asphalt is wearing down, it's that surface treatment that's wearing down. So you chip it again. Next, please. Pavement preservation, <coughs> part of your pavement management program that, that Ryan and Dave practice here for the city. It's basically getting to the roads before they get too bad. Spending the money, a little bit of money now, to save you some big bucks later on. All right? Here in Sheboygan, as we did in most places, we've saved you about 50% against a traditional mill and fill. If you were to come in and take out that asphalt on North 8th from Michigan to, to Highland Terrace, there by the cemetery, go ahead and take it out and put new stuff back in as compared to what we're doing here with a hot in place with a uh, MIGS overlay, Onyx overlay, you'd be paying twice as much, just about in that neighborhood with no increase in performance. Okay? Next, please. This is a slide I present when I'm, when I'm talking more about pavement preservation, but I think it strikes to what a good pavement preservation, pavement management program can do in longevity for your asphalt pavements. If you get that road at the right time, don't let it get too bad. You can spend a dollar to save yourself eight dollars and essentially have a perpetual pavement. It wears, you fix it, it comes back up. It wears, you fix it, it comes back up. And it keeps going on and on. Next, please. Typical grind and overlay. This is where we compare ourselves to. To an inch and a half or two inch, grind it out, put it back. Next, please. When you grind it out, you've got these various steps. You've got your milling machine. You're taking the millings. You haul the millings out. 
you bring a st attack code in, you, bring, you haul your, your <coughs> leveling course in, you roll it, you bring your surface course in, you roll it, you know, a various number of steps, all that traffic on your roads. Trucks, noise, that, uh, uh, detriment to the uh, infrastructure that you have, heavy, uh, carrying heavy trucks. Next, please. With hot in place, you don't have any of that. Next, please. What can hot in place do for my roads? In essence, it's a pavement preservation technique that can preserve your asphalt pavements and correct all your surface defects. And I emphasize surfaces. There's something deeper down in the mat. You know, we're not going to get to that. <coughs> if it's not in that two inches, it's not top, top two inches, we're not, we're not going to be able to fix it. Deeper down in the mat, since our heat does penetrate down about six inches, we can, on an asphalt you know, course, have an impact on it, because when we hit with a roller, we'll be kneading that lower mat together a little bit. So we have crack retardation. We don't have crack prevention. We have crack retardation. So on your, on, on your roads here, since we're over a pavement substructure, a concrete substructure, <coughs> I'll be honest with you, wherever those concrete panel joints are, you'll see them next year, just as you would with anything else you put on top of that road. But are they going to be the big wonking cracks you've got now? No, they're going to be smaller little hairline cracks that Ryan and Dave will get to. They'll crack fill them, and you're going to be pavement <coughs> preservation, pavement management. So all your raveling, all your potholes, all your, all your surface defects are going to be corrected for pennies on the dollar. Next, please. There's a, a fatigue crack where the asphalt, you know, you're just continually wearing in, in, in one track, and the asphalt gets fatigued. Keep, next, please. Thermal and transverse cracking. This is your standard when you see a, a, any asphalt road where you have, like, every 30 feet, you'll have a crack going across the road or you have a longitudinal crack going down the road. Those are shrinkage cracks. Those are normal uh, asphalt characteristics. It's going to happen. Happens faster here in Wisconsin in the upper climates because of our hot summers, cold winters. You know, down south where they have a more, you know, not moderate, well, moderate temperature, it takes longer for those thermal cracks to develop. Next, please. Alligator cracking is just that. It looks like the skin of an alligator. This is where, you know, it can, it can represent base issues, but if you don't have any settlement, it's typically in that upper layer where water has gotten between the layers and it's freeze-thawed and it's caused it to crack. Next, please. Uh, edge cracking is just that. We don't have adequate edge support and it rolls off. Next, please. Uh, potholes, well, we all know what potholes are. Next. Shoving and raveling, um, where you come up to a stop or, or someone accelerates fast, typically a stop with a heavy truck repeatedly, and that asphalt gives way and shoves because it doesn't have the bind or the adherence to the substrate below. Next, please. Block cracking, this is similar to your transverse and, and longitudinal uh, shrinkage cracks, but it happens <coughs> on a much more regular and, and predictable basis and actually looks like big building blocks are, are made it, making up the road. Standard trans, uh, transverse cracking, next. And your longitudinal cracking, the, your, basically your center line crack where the road on an asphalt pavement basically gives it up first. When you're driving down the highway uh, uh, on, on an asphalt road, you know, the first place that road's gonna give it up is that center line crack. And that's one of the really big benefits of the hot in place recycling is that when we come back the other direction, we overlap when we did before. So when we finish a job like we did on, on uh, North 8 from Michigan to Highland Terrace, curb to curb, start <coughs> to finish, is one homogeneous mat. There's no seams, no cracks, no dips, no runs, no errors. Oh, there's maybe a couple dips because we have to follow the existing grades. So if you have a, a belly dip there, you're going to have a belly dip when you're done. But all the road chatter, I don't know if any of you have driven those roads lately, they ride a lot smoother than what they did before. Next, please. Anything else? Next? What is the next one? It's thinking about it, huh? No, it's there. Concrete slab. Oh, con this is what you're going to experience when you... I thought we had a transverse crack still there. Uh, <coughs> because that concrete slab's going to move. Can't stop it. And that asphalt overlay is not going to stop it. So you're going to get cracks like this back on the streets that we're doing that have, that have the concrete base to them, simply because... It's the nature of the beast. You get out there and you crack fill it, and you're going to be you're going to be happy. <coughs> Please. Writing and base deformation. Okay. 
Rutting is a big thing that hot and place asphalt. This is one of the two things that we hang our hat on. All right? One is saving money. Because of the oil that we use as a recycling agent or rejuvenating agent, we have a couple studies that have done, and there's a summary in the, in the information that I provided, which shows that we have increased the oil content in the road, but we've also increased the anti-rutting component of that road surface. And we performed these tests on a number of roads, so pretty much we, have, we can say with a great deal of confidence that regardless of the road that we do, asphalt road that we do, we are going to improve the anti-rutting. Now, I say that if you have a rut that is a result of a base deformation, all bets are off. It's going to rut again because it's the base that's rutting. Next slide. If you have a rut that's asphalt deformation, in other words, the asphalt is now <coughs> mounted up off the side of that wheel track, that's an asphalt deformation. We can fix that. And you've had a couple of those on, on North 8. Next, please. So you're doing these roads this year. We've already completed North 8th from Michigan to Highland Terrace. And just today, we completed North Avenue <coughs> from, what is it, 4th to 10th, uh, if I see on there correctly. Um, one of the downfalls that, that, or not downfalls, but limitations that we have when we're working with medians, uh, th uh, like we have on North Avenue, is that even though the rear axles on the back of the trailers articulate, allow us to take nice sharp turns, we can't take a sharp enough turn to make a U-turn around that median. I mean, that's just not happening. I'm sorry. So what we do is we swing in and catch as much of that opening between the medians as we possibly can. And then we back up and we catch the lane that we didn't do. So if you drive out to North Avenue, you'll see that there will be little wedges or triangles in every median opening at each end of it that we just can't get to. And we were thinking about trying to back up, you know, go 90 degrees to the road, back up and pull across, but the road's just not wide enough for us to do that. And it's offset a little bit uh, from the opening. It's, so we looked at it, we stepped it off, and we said, yeah, you're out there. And Ryan and his guy, they know what's going on, and uh, so they're, they're happy with it. Uh, next, please. Before and after pictures of your local roads. I took a couple here. Hopefully these will show up pretty good. Next, please. This is North 8th Street before. This is in front of the Restore store. Okay? Both of these next pictures. So there's one before. Next. And there's after. In the same, same view. Next. There's before looking north. Is it north? Yeah, north. And next. And there it is after. Next slide. This is, again, just uh, 8th Street in front of the Restore store, just kind of a longer view to show that curve line. What we did, since I, got, I don't think Ryan and Dave have done it, but uh, you've paved into the, the concrete curb pan. And we were initially thinking that, that we can heat or scarify that and leave, that, you know, and leave it in there and roll it in there. That turned out to be more problematic than it's worth. So what you're seeing there is we figured out where that edge of that curb pan is underneath the asphalt. And we're going right up to that. And that way we're getting good compaction because what was happening, we were, we were, we were you know, not getting good compaction and we wanted to make sure we did that. And we were causing more, more problems or potentially more problems because the high heat that comes off of our units hitting that curb head, uh, you have the potential of that concrete has a different thermal expansion rate than the asphalt. And we don't want to be blowing your concrete curbs apart. So you know, that, that tends to get real expensive real quick for us. And don't like that. So we moved off. Uh, we're very happy with, with, with the results that we're getting here, and uh, I think you will be too. Uh, next. Here we have, is this, this is North Avenue. And what I wanted to show here is, is this is a, a nice longitudinal crack. And next. And there it is after our process. It's gone. You know, that particular crack, you know, I can almost guarantee you won't come back. Next. And that's it. Hopefully I didn't take too much of your time. Bill, thank you very much for that uh, presentation. Were there any questions for him? Okay. Thanks so much. Next, we'll move on to our consent agenda. And I'll include items 2.3 through 2.11. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. 
Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to reports of officers. Item 3.1 is an RO by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred General Ordinance Number 11 of 1415 by Alderman Hammond and Lassard, RO Number 76 of 1516, and RO Number 92 of 1516 by the City Clerk being a petition for direct annexation of the Wagner Excavating Properties LLC by Greg Wagner and recommends approval of the attached substitute ordinance. Okay, that will lie over. Um, next is item 3.2, uh, which is an RO by the city clerk uh, submitting all, all those 3.2 through 3.10 will be referred to various committees. Item 4.1 is a resolution by Alderman Hammond approving the first amendment to the contract for sale of real estate between Becknell Industries and the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to suspend. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. I'd move to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That resolution is before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Moving on to item 4.2 is a resolution by Alderman Hammond authorizing enter in, into a contract with Vinton Construction for street improvements on Pennsylvania Avenue. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to suspend. Second. Thank you for that motion. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. I'd move to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 4.3 will lie over. Items 4.4 through 4.6 will be referred to various committees. Then going on to reports of committees. Item 5.1 is an RC by the Finance Committee to whom is referred resolution number 59 of 1516 by Alderman Hammond authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2015 budget to establish estimated revenue and appropriations for the 2015 Community Development Block Grant Entitlement Program and recommends passing the resolution. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? Twelve eyes, one abstention. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 60 of 1516 from Alderman Hammond <laughs> authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2015 budget to establish an appropriation for contract for the purchase of 2016 Freightliner tandem axle combination sewer jetter and vacuum. Recommends the resolution be passed. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion. Is there any discussion on that motion? <clears throat> Seeing none, will the clerk please call, call the roll for passage? <laughs> 
13 ayes. Motion passes. Next item is 5.3, which is an RC by law and licensing, reporting that their committee voted to conditionally recommend that the Common Council not renew the beverage operator's license number 9959 held by Kaelin Negron. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Second. Thank you for that uh, motion and support uh, under discussion. Is Kaelin Negron here this evening? She is not. We did invite her to two um, meetings and she did not appear at either of them. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> 13 ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.4 is an RC by law and licensing to whom was referred RO number 39 of 1415 by the city clerk submitting various license applications. Recommends that the beverage operator's license number 8558 be denied based upon her failure to accurate reveal all relevant convictions on her application, her record of violations related to the licensed activity, and her record as a repeat law offender and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Second. Is um, Stephanie Butler here this evening? She is not. We invited her to our committee four times and she did not um, show up either time. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Uh, item five point five is an RC by law and licensing, reporting that their committee voted to conditionally recommend that the Common Council not renew the beverage operator's license number two four four zero, held by Martha Jo Bootson. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. Move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderweel. Is Martha Jo Bootson here this evening? She is not. Uh, same thing, we invited her at many occasions and she did not show up. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.6 is an RC by Public Protection and Safety to whom is referred resolution number 61 of 1516 by Alderman Jose enacting a temporary speed enforcement zone from Indiana Avenue to Erie Avenue along North 14th Street and recommends that the document be placed on file. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 5.7 is an RC by Public Protection and Safety, who is re referred General Ordinance Number 13 of 1415 by Alderman Jose, repealing General Ordinance Number 9 of 1516 regarding one hour parking zone on the east side of South A Street, north of Georgia Avenue, and recommends that the document be placed on file and to direct the city engineer to create the necessary documents to create parking spots across the street. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Alderman Bellinger? No. Nope. Alderman Carlson. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to take a second to thank the school district for allowing us to um, put these spaces in across the street from the uh, 
um, the original plan. Um, they're giving up some land that they don't have to, and once again, I just want to thank them. Thank you very much for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Items 5.8 through 5.10 will be referred to various committees. Under ordinances, uh, items 6.1 through 6.3 will also be referred. Uh, there are no matters laid over. Under other matters, uh, 8.1 is an RO by the city clerk granting variance license applications. Any, Alderman Bellinger? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move that the ERO be accepted and filed. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? <clears throat> Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 9.1 is, is other matters. Uh, City Attorney? Thank you. 9.1, uh, there is an RO. Submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2015 and June 30th, 2017. That'll be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Next, we have a motion for closed session. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to convene in closed session under the exemption contained in section 19.851-E, Wisconsin statute for the purpose of deliberating the possible sale of public property where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to the former Shukert property in motion to convene in closed session pursuant to section 19.851-G, Wisconsin statute for conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is which it is or is likely to be become involved to wit the matter of JFM1 versus the city of Sheboygan. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the roll for closed session? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Uh, just uh, so the people at home know that uh, this, the council plans to uh, uh, can, uh, adjourn in closed session and we will not be coming back into open session. We'll take a short recess till quarter to seven. <laughs>